Hi, we are engineering brothers. In our previous class, we have completed our FBFI analogy. Right now, I am interested in our some solutions regarding our rotational system because that sort of solutions are very, very essential for our control system. So you can add a lot of more systems, say if two combined systems are there, one portion has the translational motion and the another one is our rotational motion. So by using that concept or in order to find out the equations or crucial equations which actually defines our control strategy for our system. So before I go into that, the basics of our rotational systems are essential and we have already introduced our nodal method for our translational system. Now it is the evident part, part over here that our ultimate focus is rotational system. In our previous class, we have already completed the FVFI analogy over there and how do I compare our electrical and mechanical rotational systems over there. Please do follow that videos if you want to understand that. Now get back to our present class. The first one is our nodal method for rotational system. What is that? We can use uh, two different method. The first method is our nodal method which I am going to explain or I am going to use uh, in a broader way because uh, for me this method is very very essential but you can use the free body diagram methodology also. So I will complete or I will do the problem for our same given system and I will do compare these two methodologies the first one is our nodal method and second one is our uh, free body diagram method so that will be our next class i will do take the diagram or how to consider this diagram uh, for our signal flow graph that will be our next class so in our present class i will do consider the nodal method for our rotational system and how to bring the diagram over here now if you do concentrate on our given rotational system you can see that we have got the g1 j2 present over here so quite clearly you can see that if you consider this rotating element as our disc quite clearly the g1 means here a disc is been present and here another disc is present over here and on that particular disc, a uh, torque has applied in this point and the shaft is, this is our shaft or middle portion is our shaft. The shaft is static and uh, this rotating disc which is J1 and J2 that is keep on moving after if you do apply the torque at this point over here. Now if you do apply the torque on that disc or on that uh, rotational system or on that rotating disc you will find out that a certain amount of angular displacement has happened uh, on our rotating body and uh, that because of that rotation the as this is been connected through a link of K okay or K in between our these two rotating elements then quite naturally because of this angular displacement a certain displacement has been completed at the another disk which is being given over here. So I can say that here I can say that the J1 J2 is being given over here. I can say that this is our disc that is been considered as our g1 a rotating disc and here a spring k is present in between this disc and another disc is been present over here so this is quite naturally the g1 
this is uh, J2. Say these two rotating disc has been placed over here. And uh, at this J2 point, you can see that a friction element, which is been called as viscous friction coefficient, which we have indicated over here as if a friction has been imposed over here. You can see that. So I will draw that over here. Now, if you do apply the torque at this point, because of this torque, say if I do apply the torque, say if I do apply the torque on this shaft, if I do apply the torque, certainly the angular displacement has happened at this disc and say that displacement is say the displacement is or angular displacement is our theta 1 and because of this angular displacement for our theta 1 for our disc j1 and as the angular displacement has transferred towards our whole body so quite naturally a displacement has been occurred over here and that displacement is given as our angular displacement has given here as our theta. Okay. So this is our overall diagram over here. I want to repeat this portion once again. If you do apply the torque on any given rotating system, say on this rotating body, say J1, if you do apply the torque on that given body, uh, angular displacement has happened on that given body. And I have considered that that this angular displacement is our theta one. And because of this angular displacement, at, uh, as we have applied the torque on this point or on the moving body, that angular displacement has transferred towards our rest of the body. So as this body has connected with our spring setup. Here also the there is uh, some effect on that angular displacement on that body as well. And that uh, transfer on the another disc which is being considered by us as J2 and uh, a particular angular displacement has happened at the output which is been considered as our theta and you can see that uh, the at the extreme end of our shaft there is uh, some viscous friction coefficient has present on our given rotating body so this is our uh, given problem now our ultimate method is to draw the given circuit in the form of nodal method. So first I will point out that this is our say this is our theta one and this one is our theta. We will do consider the angular displacement that is our main mantra. So first I will find out at which point the angular displacement has happened over there and let us first draw the node or particular node over here. So I should take that the theta one or in a more precise way if I do apply the torque on our uh, rotating body of J1, the angular displacement for uh, that body or for that uh, or on that uh, rotating body should be our theta one. And because of that uh, applied torque, you can get or you can see that at the output point there is some certain angular displacement as well. So first I have drawn these two points as our rotating system displacement because of our applied torque. Now let us do add all those crucial elements. With this theta one, the J one is connected. So this is our J one is connected and the torque is being given just like this one. So this is our torque. Okay. Now you can see that in between our 
theta 1 and theta 2, you can understand that the k is being placed in between these two points. So, the k has connected in between our theta 1 and theta. So, this is our k and uh, the theta has connected with our two elements. The first element is our, this is our j2, say this is our j2 and that theta element has connected with this fictional part also which we have considered as our viscous friction coefficient. So, the symbol for that one is this is our symbol which we have considered as our f. Okay. I think I should uh, draw in a more precise way that will be better. So, this is the symbol for our friction element. Okay. So, this is our nodal diagram for our given circuit. Now, you can tell me that how do I get to know that the torque element has been going from here to here. I have a solution because for our D'Alembert principle, if you do apply the torque on any given body, then uh, the opposing elements should be in the form of negative terminology or in the form of negative one because we do know that according to the D'Alembert principle applied torque plus resistive torque resistive torque means that uh, torque components which are opposing our given torque the summation of these two torque elements should be our zero now if you come back towards our nodal method I have identified that so which one is our angular displacement so this one is theta 1 and theta so quite naturally you can see that the theta 1 has connected with our j1 so I have drawn that over here which has been considered as j1 and the torque has been applied over here in this way okay I have considered the torque has applied on this way and uh, these elements are in the opposite direction okay say in this direction so it is quite naturally in the opposite direction so these are our resistive torque elements for our given circuit that is why i can say that uh, the arrow for these elements should be uh, if the torque has applied from lower to upper point so for this element for our j1 k k and rest of the elements that is actually opposing our applied torque element or uh, these are our resistive torque that is why the direction for this element should be in the opposite direction okay that is why i can configure this diagram over here now if you do apply the torque on this given body because of that applied torque a certain angular displacement has happened over there so i have identified this one is theta one this one is theta now you can see that the theta 1 has connected with our j1 that is why I have uh, drawn the j1 factor over here and uh, I have analyzed uh, the torque direction for our rotational system and you can see that in between our theta 1 and theta the k element has present over here that is why I have included the in between our theta 1 and theta these two are our said angular displacement in between these two displacement factors or angular displacement the k is been present over here so this one has been completed so after this one i have drawn so the last one is with the theta we have got as the k is the common point in between our theta one theta so the k is automatically present or that is been connected with our theta and you, if you can understand that the J2 has connected with our theta, which I have drawn over here. And the last one, if you do follow our extreme right hand side, you can see that the dashboard system has applied or is been present over there. That is why I have drawn the dashboard system over here. So this is the schematic representation for our nodal method. Uh, and uh, I am following this method uh, to solve some crucial problems for our rotational systems which will be uh, upcoming or which will be coming 
um, in our next classes okay so in our next class we will do configure the same diagram with our another method which should be our um, free body diagram method so i have analyzed uh, this nodal method analogy over here if you still have any doubts please let us know in the comment section for better understanding and i do know that this type of videos are altogether special and i am not going to skip any part of our uh, explanation over here so stay tuned with our channel uh, hit the bell icon for more updates and stay tuned with our channel okay and please do subscribe our channel because this type of class are altogether very very special and you can feel that no one is doing this type of rigorous analysis and i am here always try to improve your concepts if you have any doubts regarding a, a, our any part of our explanation please let us know in the comment section we will be there always try to help you okay that's it thank you and goodbye If you like my video, so what are you waiting for? Please do subscribe my channel, hit the bell icon for more updates, and 
Stay tuned to the channel. Thank you and goodbye.